and welcome to Six Family Church live stream. Um, and I'm just going to open in prayer. Um, dear Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you that we can come before your throne, Lord. Please may you just bless this whole service, Lord, as we focus our hearts to you and attention to you and we open our hearts to learn more about your words and to grow in our faith. Um, and that you just wonder that you are dwelling in us, Lord, and that um, you've given us um, the power and the ability to become good men and women of God. Um, amen. 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 So we're just going to start with some praise songs.
strong tower that we can run unto and we'll be safe. Hallelujah. We just pray that, uh, you know, you've made the Lord your strong tower, um, that you can run to for safety. You can stay under and inside that tower for security. Hallelujah. He is our strong defense. He is our, 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 our rock, our foundation, and our covering and our protection. Hallelujah. This whole world is shaking, but God is our strong tower. You can put your faith in him, you can trust in him, and you will be safe. Hallelujah. Don't run to something else. Run to God. Run to God. And you find your security. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
worship the Lord right where you are. Just worshiping, just praise Him, just praise Him. Hallelujah.
shikiri manduru busata rike mondo kobo shikari yanda raba baba busata busanda thank you lord thank you jesus hallelujah thank you lord Thank you Jesus. Because you are with us Lord. We will not be afraid. Thank you Lord. Glory be to your name. Thank you Father. Oh Lord. coming at once for now. Thanks for resting. Yeah. It's okay. Praise God. We're well, welcome. Um, once again, I hope you enjoyed that time of worship, and um, the Lord has been good to uh, to us uh, throughout this week, and uh, we believe that um, the Lord has been good to you too. God is always good, and is good all the time. There should not be a moment where. We uh, we consider God to be uh, not good because of circumstances, because God is never um, I just trying to get the camera. Okay, praise God, Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what kind of week you may have had. Um, God is always good. God is always good. So we want to thank God um, in this family for His goodness, for His loving kindness uh, throughout this week. He has gone before us and He has um, been with us and protected us. Glory be to God. And um, we have a, um, a birthday uh, boy in the household um, for City Family Church. Probably uh, you have seen the message on the, on the group. So we will uh, wish him happy birthday at the end of uh, my encouragement to sing happy birthday to him. So stay with us and, um, and you, can, you can join us in, in that. So we're going to get into the word of encouragement again today. And uh, uh, let's just uh, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for uh, this privilege and um, uh, opportunity once again to listen to your word, uh, to receive your word. Uh, your word is life. It gives us life and um, it encourages us and it builds our lives. Uh, many people uh, in, in this world uh, are searching for this word and, and, and opportunities like this. Uh, but here we are, Lord, um, freely ready to receive. So, Father, we are grateful and thankful for this. So we pray that uh, ears will be attentive in the name of Jesus to receive the word. And, Father, I pray myself that uh, you just anoint this word that I'm going to speak, Lord. And Father, I bless the the the, uh, the the people that are watching, that are listening to this. May this word, Father God, do a work in their lives. In the name of Jesus. May this word just lift somebody up, encourage somebody, heal somebody. Hallelujah. Uh, bring victory in the life of somebody. So Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that your spirit will stir up uh, their faith, O oh God, to receive this word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. And um, I want to to bring today uh, uh, an encouragement word, which um, I'm titling "Stability in Unstable Times." Finding stability in unstable times, and um, we know that even though the world is shaken by stuff that's going on, uh, economically, uh, politically, and uh, um, all this, um, you know, health-wise, the, uh, the COVID pandemics, you know, the world is shaken. Uh, but our God, the Bible says, is a strong foundation. He's not just a foundation. He's a strong foundation. And uh, everyone who has put their trust in him, the Bible says his house is built on that foundation. And that foundation, some scriptures in the Bible call it the rock, the immovable rock, intact rock. You know, if you are going to build anything that will rust for long, you want to base it on a strong foundation. And our God is a strong foundation. And your house and my house, if it is built on him, on that rock, then though anything around us may shake, or is shaking, we will remain stable. Hallelujah. So we can be stable in unstable times. We can remain immovable when everything else is moving. This world is prone to uh, earthquakes and uh, uh, natural disasters and tsunamis and storms and uh, hurricanes that can come and butter things and structures, you know, buildings can sway and, you know, uh, all these uh, infrastructures that we see, we see, uh, you know, you know, bridges and highways, you know, collapsing, you know, um, that just shows the power of, of, of nature. But spiritually, People can be shaken too. People can be shaken too. Not necessarily by uh, these physical natural disasters and, and things like that. But by, by you, know, you know, the pressure of life and, and the things that are going on um, around a person. You know, you can feel shaken. And... Um, Whilst you may not stop the external forces that are causing the shaking, the Bible says we can remain firm and stable despite the shaking. And that stability only comes when we put our trust in God. And, um, and I know that um, from um, my uh, uh, knowledge of being an engineer, a civil engineer who um, designs structures and, 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 and things like that, that um, perpetual external force, like I'm shaking this table right now, like this, you know, if I shake it now and I stop, everything that's on it is okay probably will, will attain some kind of uh, moment of stability. And then I'll shake it again. Um, as long as it doesn't collapse, it will be fine. But there is something else which is called uh, uh, fatigue. You know, if I keep shaking this, keep shaking this, keep shaking this, keep shaking it, keep shaking it, probably at some stage, this table is going to suffer fatigue. 
the things that are on the table are going to be dispersed. So sometimes it's not just uh, the, uh, the, the amount of force, external force, or the amount of pressure that could cause somebody to, to, uh, to become unstable. It could be just the period of time over which that pressure has, you know, has lasted, has sustained itself, that you begin to feel fatigued, you begin to feel uh, 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 tired, and eventually, eventually, possibly even give up, quit. And what I want to encourage you is, you know, these unstable times that this world is going through, um, we don't know. Uh, particularly this situation of the COVID pandemic, now we are hearing stories that, you know, is something that may, may last, you know, for a, a long while. It doesn't matter. It's not the first thing that has lasted for a while in this world. There are so many things, so many other pressures that are just go on and on and on and on. That's the nature of this world. But it's in this world that we are. A world that is perpetually just relentlessly subject to all these things shaking it how do we stay stable in this kind of world well we can because Jesus said to us that we will be in this world but not of this world so he knew that though we are in this world that is shaking all over around it we can still remain stable. Hallelujah. We can still remain stable. You see, I have seen over this period of time uh, comments. I've read some of them on social media. You know, I've even heard some of them from uh, uh, people that I've spoken to on the phone. Uh, yeah, some of the, these comments have not been said uh, literally. But you would have heard things like, oh, we, we, this is already the, uh, the, the fifth month of, of 2020. We're going into the sixth month. Almost half the year is gone. Oh, this year is wasted. This year is gone already. Oh, what a wasted year. And all those kind of things. Well, child of God, let me just remind you. There is no waste in God. 2020 is not a wasted year. And every plan of God that God ever had for you and I for 2020 is still on course. You are still on course of that destiny in the name of Jesus. So don't you get into uh, this... Um, talk uh you know negative talk of uh, you know uh you know how are you gonna recover this six months that is already gone now and what's gonna happen how are you gonna this is how the world sees things but for a believer a child of god no because the bible says a thousand years is like a day it's like a day to god and the day is like a thousand to god so this Five months has gone in 2020, though, under all this distress of uh, this pandemic and everything has been suspended, things have not been done. It doesn't matter, really, because when we go back to God and His intention and plan for us, then we see that actually whatever time has passed, whether under lockdown, without having to do anything or whatever, it's really nothing. And I'll just invite you to the book of Jeremiah 29. And I'll read you this verse that we all know very, very well. Jeremiah 29. I want to show you something there to encourage you that you have lost nothing. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That every plan 
God has ever had for you for 2020 and the years to come ahead that you are on calls to that destiny being fulfilled in Jesus name so if you are there Jeremiah 29 uh, verse 11 that we all know very well now just read this verse to you this is what uh, the Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. We know this verse very well. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. To give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Now if you, you've been a Christian for some time and you're familiar with the word, this scripture is something that will pop out of your, your spirit. You can quote it as you wake out of bed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Even when you're dreaming, you know, say, oh, wake up, wake up. You know, you probably can sing this scripture to yourself. But I just want to mention a few things about this scripture. But let me read it again. For I know, this is God saying, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Now, many times, okay, this scripture has been used or been quoted to encourage somebody who's looking forward to something. Or maybe they're just about to start something. Maybe they are looking for a job. Or maybe they've just graduated. You know, we write this scripture on their congratulatory uh, cards and, you know, we, you know it's, it's a nice scripture to quote on there. That's okay. But let me just take you back. A few verses on the scripture. So we understand who God was speaking to and the situation in which they were when he said these words to them. Okay? Now, who did God say these words to? God said these words to the nation of Israel. To the nation of Israel. Right. Now, now, where was the nation of Israel when God says his words? And this is very important for us to understand my initial comments of encouragement to you of staying stable in unstable times. Where was the nation of Israel when God said these words to them? For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Now, when you go up to verse 4 of the same chapter, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. That answers the question. Who did the God say these words to? He said them to the nation of Israel. Where were they when he said these words? They were in exile. In Babylon. In exile. They were away from home. They were in a, in a, a, in a shaken environment. They were in a strange environment. They, you know, it's, it's, it's like being stuck in a place which is not your home. You, you can't, you can't, no, have you, have you ever been, have you ever left your home and traveled to some place and, uh, and, and you can't just quite have the comfort of your home, you can't have the, the kind of shower that you have, you can't have the kind of toast that you have, you can't have the kind of food that you have, you can't cook what you have. It's quite a, a difficult, stressful time because you are away from home. The nation of Israel were in exile to the Babylonians. It was, a, they could not have the comfort and, and the, 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 the environment that they would have back home. Now, in that situation, when they are in exile, God says these words to them. To them. He says, he says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. And now, 
just to give you some other specifics that God gave to the nation of Israel. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 goes to say, For thus says the Lord, when 70 years have been completed for Babylon, I will visit you and fulfill my good word to you to bring you back to this place. How many years? 70 years. God even gives them specifics. 70 years in Babylon, in exile. Then I will fulfill, fulfill my words to you. Which words would he fulfill? He will fulfill verse 11. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans of welfare, not of calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Now, come on, God. <laughs> we, are, we, are in, we are in exile. Can you imagine, can you imagine visiting a prison and, and, and you speaking to somebody who's in prison the, the, the first thing, the, the thing they want to hear from you is, you get out tomorrow. And then you say, I know the plans I have for you. you ha I have good plans for you. You speak to somebody who's in prison. I have good plans for you. Oh, your, your future is great. <laughs> your future is, is wonderful. Your future has got no calamity in it. Your, 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 your future is full of hope. They're in prison. It doesn't quite make sense. But God said these words that we quote all the time. This is scripture, which is so powerful to the nation of Israel when they were in a shaken environment. But the one thing we get from here is, verse 10, God says, I will fulfill what I'm saying to you. So all the nation of Israel needed to do now is to take this word of God, trust God, that though we will be in exile for 70 years, God has said, I will bring you out and I will fulfill and I will give you what I'm promising in verse 11. So what keeps them stable in a shaken environment is the word of God. Now, we know the nation of Israel uh, went through the way, you know, like a seesaw, up and down, up and down. Today they, they trust in God. Tomorrow they are, they are wobbled and things like that. But thank God that God doesn't wobble because we see later on in the word of God that God fulfilled what he said. He brought them through. And they had rest, their restoration. They were restored. They were back home. And they were enjoying that future and that hope. That God promised to them. Hallelujah. You know, beloved, God always fulfills and accomplishes his promise. Whatever God would have promised and said to you at the beginning of this year, it doesn't matter where the first five months have gone. You know, you know the, the, the disruption that has, has happened to, to the plans that you had. In, in the first half of the day, it doesn't matter. The God who has said, I have good plans for you, and I know the plans I have for you, as he fulfilled it with the nation of Israel, God always fulfills what he starts. The Bible says he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And whatever he begins, he brings to accomplishment. He brings to accomplishment. So I want you to hold on to this truth. And, and, and it doesn't matter whether your ship looks like it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's missed the course and it's off uh, the ladder of where it's supposed to dock. It doesn't matter. God who calls you to set off from one shore will cause you to dock on the other shore. He is in control like he was for the nation of Israel. Hallelujah, for 70 years. So don't, don't allow setbacks to distract your faith. Because setbacks don't and cannot stop God's plan for your destiny. So why would you want the setbacks to distract the plans that God has for you? 
they will never stop God's plan for you. They will never stop God's destiny for you. It doesn't matter how it looks on today. So it's up to you now to choose either to trust in him or to let go. But as God has promised, he always fulfills and brings it to pass. You see, Jesus said these words in John 16, 33. Maybe we should read that. All of us together. And I think every Sunday I probably mentioned this scripture. But it's worth mentioning to just keep reminding ourselves. John 16, verse 3. Jesus did say, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Then he goes on to say, in the world, this world, what will you have? What is you and I going to have? You will have tribulation. Tribulation means trouble, hardships. But thank God that Jesus didn't just end there. And I am encouraged that Jesus did say, but take courage for I have overcome the world. So just like the nation of Israel, you could be going through, you are in that exile time in Babylon for, for 70 years. You know, your, you, know, you know, 70 years, you can co put it in context concerning you know, your, your personal situation. Could be a day, a month. But it doesn't matter. Jesus says, and I'm glad Jesus did say this, because this encourages me and you. That he did not just say, in this world you have trouble, and the ends there, no, but he says, but take care, but, 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 take courage. Some versions say, be of good cheer. Why? Because not me and you, Jesus has overcome the world. So, Jesus, whom we trust in, has overcome the world. And Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the foundation. So, if we keep you know, trusting him, it's, it doesn't matter what, how the world around us is shaking, we will have our victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will overcome. Why? Because Jesus has already overcome. So, be, beloved, the outcome of everything we're going through has already been determined. <laughs> Just like it was with the children of Israel. And when all dust settles, you and I, we win. Why? Because the Bible says we win all the time. We are more than conquerors. The dust will settle if we continue to stand and trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, we know here... As believers, we don't pretend that all is well. That's not faith. We don't, we don't uh, bury our, our, our heads in the sand and say, Oh, no, you know, it's, uh, you know things are so bad and, and uh, uh, that's, the way, that's, the way, that's the way things are. Or, or maybe say, Oh, no, 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 things, things are alright. No, that's not the life of a believer. We acknowledge that everything around is shaking. However, I am standing on the rock, the foundation, the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. And the Bible says it doesn't get shaken. That's what we do. Now, I'll just leave you with this encouragement that I would like us to, to take a leaf from. This is, this is Paul. The attitude we must have to stay stable in unstable times. We must have this positive attitude that no matter what's going on, it will not change your lifestyle of faith. You will continue to do what you know to do well. And this is what Paul did. Now, if you turn very quickly to the book of Acts, this is when Paul was about to take a journey to Jerusalem. And this is what he said. Books of the, the, the book of Acts chapter 20. Let's take some encouragement, some example of determination from Paul when facing 
a challenging situation or a challenging time. Acts chapter 20, uh, we can quickly go to verse 22. Now listen to this. Acts 20, verse 22. And now, behold, bound in spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Then he goes on to say in verse 24, But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, in order that I may finish my cause and the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify summary of the gospel of the grace of God. Hallelujah. Now, Paul knew that when he gets to Jerusalem, <laughs> awaiting for him there were chains. He knew that very well. That the, the, the Holy Spirit had even testified to him in verse 20, 23. Sorry, I think I missed that verse 23. He says, except that the Holy Spirit somebody testified to me in every city, saying that the bonds and affliction await me. Can you think about that? <laughs> Paul is saying, I am going to Jerusalem. But the Holy Spirit has actually told me that awaiting for me in Jerusalem are chains and afflictions. But what was Paul's reaction? What was Paul's attitude? Paul didn't say, oh, no, 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 I'm not going. Holy Spirit, thank you for revealing these things to me. But I'm, 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 go, I'm not going. I'm not going. No. The Bible says, Paul says, Paul says, oh, oh, you know, but I do not consider my life of any account or dear to myself in verse 24. In order that I may finish my course and the ministry which I've received from Lord Jesus Christ. When we're going through times that are shaking, we must understand that God has a destiny and a plan that has not changed. And that that plan is on course. And that it is a ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever storms and circumstances and the rumors of all that we hear, or the things that we see us, just like Paul, we should still be determined to go ahead and keep living a lifestyle that we live. What lifestyle do you live? Well, if you're a Christian and a believer, it's a lifestyle of faith. So why would you allow storms and challenges around you to change your lifestyle? Paul was determined and to say, well, I've heard of all this and the Holy Spirit has, has confirmed to me, but it's not going to change my plan. I'll continue my life to do that which he has called me to do until I finish this course and the ministry that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to me. You see, many people can remain positive when things around them are okay. But will you remain determined to keep your lifestyle of faith when things around you are negative? Will you quit? Will you draw back? Will you give up and throw away Jeremiah 29 verse 11? God has declared it doesn't matter, it doesn't change. God can do anything in one minute, in one day. God can cause you to be to recover, to restore your time and your everything. Will the shaking environment or situation around you cause you to drift or to draw back? No. You and I will be like Paul and say, I am determined to push forward. Hallelujah. I heard one, one pilot say, one of the things that <laughs> they are taught to do, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, is that no matter what happens, when you're flying that plane, keep flying it. Even when the engine is falling off, just keep flying the plane. What is your attitude when the bottom has fallen out? Do you give up? No. What is your attitude? What's your reaction? When you hear on the news that, oh no, the, you know, this situation is going to go on and on, and oh, many people are going to be farrowed, yeah, they're going to lose their jobs, when you see your account is being depleted, how do you react to these things? Just like Paul, 
we remain determined that nothing around us will change our lifestyle of faith. Because God still has good plans for you and I. It doesn't matter whether you are in exile, you are in Babylon, God still has good plans. And he sent you and I the plans, I will fulfill them and they are coming to pass. What will you do? Trust in God. Hebrews chapter 10, you can read this scripture yourself afterwards. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, again, that's another scripture that we know very well, which says that do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. Hallelujah. That word makes me hold on to everything. There is a reward. And we know that reward is the great future that God has for you and I. Why would you want to throw it away? And God does not say, I'm the one who's going to throw it away. He says, you do not throw it away. So hold on unto it. So how do you stay unstable in unstable time? Continue. Be focused. Hold on. Be determined to live your lifestyle of faith. Your lifestyle of believing. Your lifestyle of trusting in God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There's nothing stable in the world around us. But our faith is stable in him. And nothing should ever stop us from living that life at all. Glory be to God. Just in conclusion, I'll leave you with this verse. Psalm 112. Let's just read that together. What the psalmist says in Psalm 112. Verse 7 and, um, and, and, and 8. Glory be to God. Psalm 112, verse 7 and 8. Listen to these words. He says, He will not fear evil tidings. What are evil tidings? Shaking ground around us. Trouble. Hardship. But he will not fear. Now, <laughs> it's one thing to say, don't fear, don't fear. But no, there's something you've got to do not to fear. What you do? Who is this one who will not fear evil tidings? The one whose heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is upheld. He will not fear. Until when? Until he looks with satisfaction on his adversaries. Until. Somebody say until. Until. Glory to God. I love it every time I see this word until. It means the battle is still on. Hallelujah. It's not over until God says it's over. And he who has promised is faithful. He has a good plan for you and I. And he will fulfill it. In Christ Jesus. So this until is for you and I to see come to pass. Until you have your satisfaction. God wants to satisfy you and I. Glory to God. I love these words. Hey, he will not be afraid. He will not fear the evil tidings. His heart is steadfast. Steadfast. Hallelujah. Stability in unstable time. Steadfast what? In trusting in the Lord. His heart is upheld. Some verses say established. When something is upheld, it's established. His heart is established. And therefore, they cannot be afraid. Ooh, hallelujah. Until you and I, we see our desires, our satisfactions fulfilled. And it's not even you and I who fills it. God himself will fulfill it. Well, that's the way that I had for you today, to encourage you. That you, no, in, no matter the shaking that is going on around us, mm. we can, you and I, can remain stable. And how do we remain stable? It's by trusting in the Lord. Being determined to live our lifestyle of faith. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. And if you do not know Jesus Christ, we just want to help you 
right now. That you don't have to live in fear. That you, like the psalmist, can become steadfast and overcome the spirit of fear. No matter how it comes and attacks, because your heart will be established and you have satisfaction. And the promise in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 can be a reality to you and something you can hold on to as you pass through these challenging and difficult times. All you need to do is give your life to Jesus. That's what we all did. I did that many, many years ago. And God has always been faithful to his word. Just pray wherever you are that Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you that you came to give me life and life abundantly. I surrender my life to you. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you for the sacrifice that you paid on the cross. That I could receive my salvation. Today, I ask that you forgive me of my sins as I put my trust in you. Thank you for serving me in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, by faith, you are saved and you are a Christian. And you can begin to trust God for the promises that we've just encouraged you with. And if you're already a Christian, I just want to encourage you. Do not allow the circumstances around us that are so shaky to alter your lifestyle of faith. Be determined like Paul. No matter the rumors I've heard. The fact they were not even rumors. They were a reality. The Bible says the Holy Spirit confirmed to Paul that you will be put in chain. Every city there is waiting for you to be afflicted. But Paul says, I am determined to go and carry on with my mission, with my life of faith to fulfill the cause and the ministry. It's the same thing. He who has promised is faithful. He will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I just want to pray for you in, in, uh, in, in, in closing. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, I just pray for me. Okay. Just pray some notes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As I was preparing this message this week to encourage you, the Lord was dropping me into my spirit a few things that I would like to prophesy to you. I would like to prophesy to you right now. And if it's something that makes an awful lot of sense in your life, just receive this prophetic word and uh, and be encouraged. I wrote it down. So I'll, 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 read, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As I bring this prophet, this word from your spirit, that you gave me to bring to your people. Concerning somebody. For 2020. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I remember the beginning of this year. God gave us a word. In, in, in our church, based on Psalm 46, verse 10, that be still and know that I am the Lord. We didn't even know that this, you know, the word is going to pass through this whole thing when God gave us that word. And we started teaching on this verse. God was just emphasizing to me towards the end of last year, be still, tell my people to be still, I know that I am Lord. And I went into the scripture and I began to study it. The whole, the whole chapter. And I realized that the nation of Israel was going through a difficult time. Wars were surrounding them. Like the things that we're going through right now. When God gave me that word, Psalm 46 was saying, I didn't know about all this. That was in December or towards the end of last year. But God just said to me, you know, my son, tell my people, 2020, they should be still and know that I am God. And I said, why God are you giving me this? Now we are going through this time, like the nation of Israel. When they heard that voice in the midst of crying and, and, and woes and, and tiredness, God spoke and said, be still, I know I am the Lord. God wants you and I to be still. We're still in charge and in control despite the storm and the turbulency that this year has gone through so far. God's plan are still intact. Your destiny is still on course. Don't change your lifestyle of faith. It's not a life to, to, to drop and then pick up when things become better. No. We are not saying these things. Now, you know, th things are hard. 
people are suffering, real suffering. But if I believe her, it doesn't matter. God's plan is still intact. I don't want to prophesy this to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, and this is what the Lord is saying to you by his spirit. Do not fret, don't fear, says the Lord. I still have plan to give you a super year, says the Lord. And God gave me this just this week, these words, and I wrote them down. You will not fail, says the Lord. Rest in me, and I'll see you through, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I'll bring you to pass all that I said I would do. You can choose to fear, but that's not what I desire for you, says the Lord. I desire that you choose to rejoice. You choose to trust in me. You choose to continue your lifestyle of trusting and believing in my word for you. Regardless of what's going on around you, you can be rest assured that your destiny is in my hands, says the Lord. That's the word that God, faith word that God gave to give to you. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak stability in that one who is getting to the point they feel they can't handle the bantering and the shaking of the, of, of the world around them. Father, in Jesus' name, just like you changed the name of, 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 of Peter from being a weak reed that can be swayed here and there to, uh, to rock. Father, in Jesus' name, today I pray and I prophesy that somebody's faith is strengthened, encouraged, and that they've got both their feet established on you, Jesus, the rock of their salvation. The cornerstone. Father, thank you. I give you praise and the glory. I pray that the sting of hardship that somebody could be going through right now be removed. And Father, that, that, that your, your child will experience peace and the calls to rejoice in the name of Jesus. I give you praise, Lord, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I hope you've been encouraged. Stay stable. Even though what is around us is shaking. And you can. Because our foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that every plan, destiny of your life, is in his hands. He committed himself whilst they were still in exile and promised that he will fulfill their future. God has already fulfilled everything that he destined for you. This is just a fence. Do not lose your confidence in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now we're just going to sing happy birthday. Hallelujah for, 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 for Adam. So, um, uh, maybe the, the uh, uh, I think the Camilla's probably can just stay where they are. We can just uh, come and oh, stand here and, and sing yeah. uh, happy birthday for, for, for Adam. And uh, uh, is, is that you got, who's going to play the uh, keyboard? And... Oh, yeah. I'll play. I'll play. I'll play that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's all just, uh, yeah, as a family, just sing happy birthday for, for, for one time. You can, you can, you can, you can sit here. Are you going to play the keyboard? Um, no. Well, why? <laughs> let's, let's, let's all uh, just uh, ca come over here and, uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can. It's very wide. It's very wide, is it? Yeah, join us in, uh, yeah, you can sit over here. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. So it's his birthday, that's one of them. And uh, you don't join us some proof. Okay. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, dear Adam. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you, Adam. Happy birthday to you. Well, sit for the church. Wherever you are, just stretch your hand. As we always do, we just want to pray for him and bless him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bless uh, your son, Adam, Lord, for this day when you ushered him into this world. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you that is such a gift unto, um, unto us and to the body of Christ. Father, thank you that um, we at City Family Church we have this um, privilege to celebrate his 26th birthday today, Lord, this year. So, Father, we celebrate this gift and we bless this gift, Lord. May your goodness continue to abound up upon him, Lord. Walk before him, Lord, and keep and watch him, Lord. And, and, and may everything, Lord, that, you know, he's, he's trusting you for, Lord, and even in this 2020, Lord, that, Lord, he will stay stable even in these unstable times. That, Lord, you continue to plant your feet in, on, on you, the solid ground. You continue trusting on you, Lord, and continue believing the promise like the one you gave to the nation of Israel in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, that I know the plans that I have for you. Mm -hmm. Plans to give you hope and the future. And they are good and there is no calamity in them. So Father, we give you praise and the glory. May the rest of this day be a great day unto him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, from City Family Church, we'll see you again next week. And we always say, be led by the Spirit, grow in a city faith, and abound in love. We'll have a great day and a great week. We'll see you soon. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.